This is the Herald's News Shows. Oh. This is We proudly present to you the Fab Plan. Welcome to the C3 News Show. We just got over our post-Congress blues. And to shorten the time to the next chaos event, we bring you some news. So 2020 has been quite a year and 2021 haven't been different. Chris, what is up in the area of press releases from the CCC? Brussels. On February the 17th, the Alliance Reclaim Your Face launched a European citizens' initiative to ban biometric mass surveillance. More than 40 European organizations aim to put the issue of biometric mass surveillance on the political agenda in Brussels. To achieve this, they are looking for 1 million signatures that must be collected in at least seven EU countries within one year. Berlin. The lockdown has forced many schools to deploy digital learning platforms in a rush. The initiative Chaos Macht Schule calls for the adoption of sustainable solutions that are already implemented and don't depend on commercial providers. Systems that are purchased now will likely be used even after the pandemic is over, which makes today's choice increasingly important. Amsterdam. MCH 2021 is cancelled. At RC3, we reported the attempt to hold the May Contain Hackers camp this summer. After careful consideration, the Dutch organization team announced the cancellation on February the 24th. Tickets will be refunded. The organizers are now looking into alternatives. And that's the news. Back to the studio. Hackerspaces almost vanished from our day-to-day -day life, but they are still here. Hey, who are you there? We are Hackerspace Gant. We're Hackerspace in Gant. Um, and we have a whole bunch of fun, geeky people uh, who visit our Hackerspace. Oh, great. And what are you known for? Yeah, so our whole Hackerspace, the whole system in our Hackerspace is based on the Hackerspace Blueprint. This is a system we've been working on um, uh, for a whole bunch of years. And our Hackerspace is basically a duocracy. We don't really have uh, any leaders here. Everybody who comes in can basically do whatever they want with, with some small limitations. We are in like, it's called a business center, but it's more a whole bunch of people who work with their hands. Um, and it's like a, a, a giant area full of garages and full of diff people who, who work with, with, with woodworking, who have small companies. There are also escape rooms here. Um, and we have our own room in this building. And uh, some of our members have other rooms in, in this building too. Can I get, can I get a tour there? Uh, is it possible? Uh, yes, yes. If, if, if you want a tour, we can still give you a personal socially distanced tour. Just send us an email. Send us an email and we will get in, in contact with you. How do you survive during this pandemic? It's difficult. Uh, our, our social evenings have basically stopped. Uh, we Normally, we do a, a small conference every year, uh, but we, we, we didn't really want to do it um, uh, a remote because a large part of the conference is the atmosphere we built in this building. Uh, normally, this entire building, we, we get it for a weekend and then we... We put LEDs in the entire building and put uh, giant screens and and play uh, uh, Dance Dance Revolution in the, in the middle of the hallways of the building. But because we couldn't do all these things, we decided just not to do New Line this year. Um, but we we do have some some cool stuff that we can still do. We recently received an amazing uh, fiber internet connection. And so now that's fantastic news, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now the the and uh, uh, the people um, who who run the network uh, they are very uh, positive against hackers, and so we we don't have any blocks. Uh, uh, there's no filters on our connection, and uh, we're allowed to do a lot of cool stuff with our connection. And we're building a small, um, like a teeny tiny data center with a few servers that our members can use. 
and and run containers on in order to still make use of the infrastructure, even though they they can't be physically in the hacker space. You seem to have a nice gallery or a museum of failures. Yeah, so Isn't it's it? it's a, a museum of everything that that's interesting. And like the, the tagline of our hacker space is unfinished projects. And so a, a lot of the interesting thing in here either has failed or is unfinished. Um, we have a bunch of 3D prints that have failed, uh, people who have tried different settings on the 3D printer and, and can show in which different ways a 3D printer can fail. Uh, it, it also contains a bunch of working stuff like we have a, a a a great gift from the dutch hacker spaces it's it's a map of the netherlands which is created on like a, a pcb which has leds in every place where there's a hacker space in in the netherlands and it's connected to the space api and so when you plug it in uh, and 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 give it a network connection then it shows a, a red light for all the hacker spaces that are closed and a green light for all the hacker spaces that are open, uh, projected on the map of uh, the Netherlands. How do we get in contact with you? Uh... Um, you can go to our website, hackerspace.gent. And hackerspace is written okay. as hackerspace and Ghent is written G-E-N-T. Flemish. Flemish. There's the Flemish name of Ghent. Uh, Gal Galesh, wish you all the best and hope to see you soon at uh, one of your events like New Line. Yes, yes, we, uh, we really hope we can or... do New Line this year. And when you thought your day just couldn't get better, well, here's our awesome project of the month. Once in a while, we will all encounter a magnificent diamond, an unforgettable experience. So let's meet some real creators of the AppFab gems in our chaos. Who are you? I, I make stuff. Uh, I make all kinds of things. I make robots, I make musical things, and I made the world of techno. What did you do? So, so, so the world of techno, it's a, it, it's a robot that doesn't do much just plays techno but it's built for people to use so it's a machine where half the experience is in what the person does with it it's no fun without the people i made a thing for for people to play with a musical play thing a thing that is it, kind of a robot but it's no fun without a person doing a thing with it so it gives it gives people this musical thing to do when did you do it it's for things like hacker camps, places where there's a lot of people and they're all in some place for a while and you can just leave a thing there and people will play with it and they'll play with it and then they'll leave it alone and somebody else will come along and play with it. Where did you do it? it it's a thing that only works if there's a, a lot of people in a place, like a camp or something, and if they're in a playful kind of frame of mind. How did you do it? You turn it on, you leave it in the middle of the path, and you walk away. And that that is, and it's always amazing. I've done it a bunch of times. You just push it somewhere, you leave it, you walk away. Sometimes you just watch from a distance and see a bunch of people walk past, and somebody comes along, and they just go, oh, yeah, I see what to do with this. And they just pick up the handles, and off they go with it. And then you don't see it again for a day. But I just write where I'm camping on it, on a sticker. And somebody, yeah, it it always comes back. Sometimes the batteries are flat, sometimes it's broken, sometimes it fell over and a wheel came off or something. One time it came back and the techno was different. Somebody had opened it, somebody had opened it up and found the software and just changed it some. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad change. Why did you do it? So it started as playing with music and space. I made a thing a bit like this. In fact, I made something a little bit like this at home, I think. It, it was a, an Arduino and a GPS. Uh, yeah, in I don't even remember when home was a long time ago. Um, Arduino, GPS, made music. Same kind of idea, but the music wasn't great. Um, this thing 
does what it does because really because a, a friend of mine, Julia, who is much more musical than me, helped with making the techno right. So we we worked on getting the music good, and then we worked on making the the thing have the right shape, have handles and wheels and sturdy and you know all that mechanical stuff. Um, and really, we do it because it's so lovely when people engage with these things when they get it and and people love it i mean of all the things i've made the world of techno is by far the thing that's had the most love from the people that see it uh, and that is a lovely thing to do it brings this extra weird thing to the camp and it's just a lot of fun to, to bring that new strangeness into the world Even if they are all happening online, we are still looking forward to the following events. The next event will be the virtual Chemnitz Linux Days with this year's motto, Mach es einfach anders, which can be read as keep it simple as well as just do it. A lot of processes for work, teaching and interaction have to be rethought. There's a demand for open source solutions. At the CLT, enhancements and new approaches will be discussed. Easter hack is cancelled. But gladly, we will have the debug over Easter again, this time with the motto Reboot to Respawn. The focus will be on climate change and what could really help to address it, politically, economically, socially and culturally. More information on the events can be found in the internet, as can be recordings of former events. You can find the links as all the others below this video. Speaking of the past, early in February, as always since 2000, The Forstem covered the wide spectrum of free and open source software projects and offered a platform for people to collaborate. In former years, more than 5,000 developers were hosted at the ULB campus in Brussels. This year, they get that online. Last but not least, there was the RC3, which we covered with the news show. RC3 first introduced the 2D world. It will reappear at both upcoming events. So, let's just remember... Here we are on the floors of the 2D world. Otanase and me try to get a feeling for the mood of all the residents here. We ask creatures passing by about their opinion. Here is what they said. Hi, my name is Olbi from the News Show Reporters. Uh, may I ask you some questions? Yeah, of course. I'm Polly. And um, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Have you been on a former case event before? And... Uh, What was your most impressive experience this year in the remote chaos? Well, I have been to the um, chaos before, but that was um, the last time when that happened in Berlin. The, the RC3 with that um, 2D world, um, I found it very fascinating how, how good that works. Even if you're in a hurry, um, the video pops up and you see a face. And then boom, the video is gone again. But it's like running through the real, uh, the real world and, and, and seeing people, not talking to them, but getting faces, getting impressions, getting what the fuck was that, you know? I, I wouldn't have thought that this would work out that good. Since the 30th Chaos Congress and every of these small events as well. And the most ex impressive experience was um, uh, probably uh, the... Haxco uh, assembly. I'm not sure they have a strange other name. I think they're called Gaffa. Gaff, something with Gaffa in the name. <laughs> they have a beautifully designed world with uh, their, their their world is a is a printed circuit board, like a computer circuit board, and you can run around there. There are um, components like uh, like little ESP modules and stuff all around. It's uh, quite beautifully made. Well, uh, sadly, I've never been to any chaos event before. Uh, this was supposed to be my first congress. Some of the maps are really well uh, done. Uh, for example, the open infrastructure of it, I really like that one because they have these uh, drawn, uh, drawn like a painting. I see some things over the year, but every year is really impressive, and this year is also very impressive and done. The most impressive thing, uh, I think, was uh, a guy from my home home base. Uh, 
meet me at a at the floor, and later I, I talk to another and say, yeah, I meet this guy on the floor, and we talk about this, and I think to myself, oh, could be happen in the in the last year or the years before. I've been on uh, several congresses, um, not last year, but uh, another congress, like I think three or four I've, I joined. Um, this time, I found it surprisingly easier to get in, uh, in, in, in small talks with strangers, um, but the talks were smaller than on, on other congresses. Yes, many times. Many times. Cool. And what is your most impressive experience this year in the remote things? Mm, first of all, maybe the everything that it worked so well. Uh, the start was a bit rough, but uh, I think it's amazing that we found the solution for the COVID situation problem. And expressing this year's event in only one word, what would you say? Chaos. I'm Thorn. The only word I can think of is awesome. Very new. New. <laughs> Colorful stillness. Awesome. So there's a common view on this event. Despite the technical issues with the world on day one and the late evenings and also the lags in streaming, most creatures told us how amazing it was that the 2D world was able to transfer the typical Congress feeling to the desks all over the world. Well, that's all for now and this year. Be excellent to each other and stay healthy. Back to the studio. No idea what to do until the next chaos event? Me neither. But we have some suggestions for you. Why not just watch some talks? Especially from a past event like the RC3. For example, this is not a game. Arne Vogelsang describes the evolution of QAnon as a play with reality, like a LARP. He ponders how this conspiracy theory could gain so much speed so quickly. Like other talks from chaos events, this talk can be found at media.ccc.de. The talk is in German with an English translation. If you're tired of looking at a screen, another recommendation would be to listen to a podcast. Baking bread is basically a science experiment. So of course, there's a podcast episode all about bread and science. If all you want is a quick lesson to understand the science in getting the perfect rice, then check out this episode, The Science of Making Bread. Alternatively, if you understand German, you also could listen to Vrind, Wer redet ist nicht tot, Whoever speaks is not dead, episode 1065, a deep dive about sourdough. If you also have some recommendations for talks or podcasts or any other topics of our show, please leave a comment. You can find the link to our recommendations and all the other talks in the video description down below. And while we are all getting bored and confused by the current lockdown situation, we are here to light up the day with our kitchen hack. Recently, there was a run on making your own bread. If you have leftovers, you can make Amarita. That's poor nights. Cut the bread to pieces. Well, or breadcrumbs. You also need a quarter liter of milk, two eggs and some butter. Whip your eggs. Add the milk, an optional vanilla flavor. Fill your egg milk into a deep plate. Drop your bread pieces into the egg milk and let them soak. Meanwhile, heat up your butter. Add your bread and turn it over. That's it. If you like, add sugar with cinnamon. Play around with different kinds of bread, milks, oils and spices. Enjoy! And now the C3 weather forecast with Kalisi. This is the C3 weather forecast brought to you by the elders of the Internet. Berlin. During the unexpected winter arrival a couple of weeks ago, we were seeing bad connections all over Germany. We were almost as well prepared as the BVG. Brandenburg. The combination of home office and homeschooling has resulted in a widespread of network outages. 
Officials have advised to keep the number of simultaneously ongoing video conferences to one per household. Munich. To alleviate the weather-induced internet auto situation, leading network politicians are planning to tap into the national emergency fax machine stockpile. Please send your application to the according authorities. Via fax, of course. And now the top four most common error codes. 403, 404, 500, and the joker is packet loss.